Hey guys, Manuela here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, start reviewing the January 2019 Algebra 1 exam. Uh, we're gonna do part one, questions one through 12 first, and then we're gonna kind of break it up in 13 to 24 to finish up the part one. Then we'll have part two, and then in another video, we'll do part three and four together. So uh, let's get started. Question number one says, the scatter plot below shows a relationship between the number of members in a family and the amount of family's weekly grocery bill. The most appropriate prediction of the grocery bill for the family that consists of six members is, so they give us a scatter plot, and with the scatter plot, we're gonna have to draw the line of best fit so we're gonna start that if you have zero family members, you're not gonna spend anything. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and draw that line of best fit. So all the dots here are gonna be same amount on top, same amount on the bottom as best we can. So right about there looks good. So there's my line. Looks pretty good, same amount on top, same amount on bottom. So for six family members, we're going up we're at $300. Question two, the function g of x is defined as g of x equals negative 2x squared plus 3x. The value of g of negative 3 is, so since we have the negative 3 next to the g, that's telling us what x is. So wherever we see an x, we're gonna plug in the uh, negative 3. So we're gonna have negative 2, parentheses, negative 3 squared, plus three times a negative three. And if we plug that into our calculator, exactly as we wrote it, and don't forget, you're gonna have to put it, those uh, a negative three in the parentheses when you plug it in. So it's negative two parentheses negative three squared plus three times a negative three and enter negative 27. Lo and behold, there's our answer. Question three. Which expression results in a rational number? So remember, a rational number is a number that terminates or is a repeating decimal. So basically, all fractions that you can write are going to be um, a rational number, where an irrational number, just for your study purposes, an irrational, irrational number is a number that goes on forever without repeating. Okay? So the only one that works here is choice three. We have the square root of 36, which is just six, the square root of 225, which is 15. So six divided by 15 is 0.4. So 0.4 is a number that terminated, okay? So a stop doesn't go any further than 0.4. So that is a rational number, choice three. Moving on, number four, the math department needs to buy new textbooks and laptops for the computer science classroom. The textbooks cost 116 each and laptops cost 439 each. If the math department it has $6,500 to spend and purchase 30 textbooks, how many laptops can they buy? So they cannot spend more than $6,500. So that's telling me inequality. So we have we're gonna use T for textbooks and L for laptops. So we can have 116 textbooks, or sorry, $116 per textbook, plus $439 for a laptop, and you cannot spend more than $6,500. So here they tell us that we have 30 textbooks that we purchased, so 116 times your 30 plus 439L less than or equal to 6,500. So we're gonna solve for L, forgot the nine there, 
So 116 times 30 is going to give us uh, 3,480. So 3,480 plus 439L less than or equal to 6,500. To continue solving that, we're going to subtract the 3,480 on both sides. So you get 439L less than or equal to, this is going to be 3,020. Divide by 439. So you're going to get 3,020 divided by 439. And we're at 6.87, about rounded. So L is less than 6.87. You cannot buy um, 0.87 of a laptop. So the amount that they can purchase is 6. Okay, careful because a lot of kids like to round up. They see the point eight. Oh, we could buy seven. Now, if you buy seven, you're going to be over that six thousand five hundred. So it's got to be less than that. All right, next one. What is the solution to the equation three fifths x plus four thirds equals one point zero four? So you're going to distribute. So you're going to have three fifths x. Three fifths times four thirds is going to be. 3 times 4, which is 12. 5 times 3, which is 15. And if you don't know that, the calculator will do it for you. Okay? Um, you could plug 3 fifths in and then multiply it by 4 thirds. Remember, if you're using the TI-84+, plus, um, to type in a fraction, you press alpha y equals, and then the first one is n over d, and you could plug it in. Whereas, if you have the TI-83+, plus, you have to put each fraction in parentheses. So, if I went like this, uh, parentheses 3 divided by 5 I know it's hard to see there I'll put it over here 3 divided by 5 times and the other one is 4 divided by 3 that's got to be in parentheses hit enter and it's going to give it to us as a decimal okay so it's 0.8 as a matter of fact we're probably going to use 0.8 in this problem because they mix fractions and decimals together and it's just easier to deal with decimals so I'll rewrite this as a decimal, plus 0.8 equals 1.04. Subtract the 0.8 on both sides. I'm going to work down here. So we have 3 fifths x equals 1.04 minus 0.8 gives us a 0.24. OK, so now we can divide by a 3 fifths. And the way you do that in your calculator, just go ahead and do 0.24 divided by parentheses, uh, 3 fifths, or 3 divided by 5. Hit enter, and you get 0.4. And that is going to be choice 2. OK, moving on. Number 6 says the area of a rectangle is represented by uh, 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Which expression can also be used to represent the area of the same rectangle? All right, so for number 6 here, they give us um, factors, all right? And those factors are going to represent the length and the width of the rectangle. So I'm going to pick one and see which one works. Um, I'm going to say, let's try choice one right off the bat. So we have 3x plus 2 times x minus 4. So now I'm going to FOIL it. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times the minus 4 is a minus 12x. 2 times x is a positive 2x. And that last one, 2 times negative 4 is a minus 8. I combine my two middle terms because they both have an x. So we have 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Lo and behold, that gets us back to the original. So it is choice 1. OK, moving on, number 7. Which relation does not represent a function? OK, so functions, your x's cannot repeat. 
So, so with this one, which one does not represent a function, I want my x's to repeat. Over here, my x's don't repeat, so I know that is a function, is not choice one. Choice two, if I use the vertical line test, remember the vertical line test means no matter where I draw that vertical line, it only hits my function once and that would be a function so this is a function and we want what is not a function over here if I plug this guy in here let's go to y equals and we have 3 the square root of x plus 1 so x plus 1 and then we close it minus 2 and I hit graph. If I look at this graph, no matter where I draw that vertical line, it's only going to hit it once. So that is a function. So it's got to be choice four. And let's see why. This represents my x's. This represents my y's. And lo and behold, one is being used twice. So since it's being used twice, it means it's being repeated twice. The same with two and the same with three. So this is definitely not a function. Number eight. Brittany is solving a quadratic equation. Her first step is shown below. Which two properties did Brittany use to get step one? So right off the bat, I see a parenthesis here, and now I have a six x plus nine, so I know that is a distributive property. You distributed the three, so it's a distributive property of multiplication over addition, because of the plus sign there. So we know we at least have this one. What else is different? We see this 10x and the 8 switch on the same side of the equal sign. So that tells me the commutative property. And that's all I see that's different. So 2 and 4 happened, so it's choice 4. All right, number 9. The graph of y equals 1 half x squared minus 8, I'm sorry, minus x minus 4 is shown below. The point A is at negative 2, 0, so they want us to label that. This is at negative 2, 0 right here. It's point A. Point B is at 0, negative 4. So 0, negative 4 is crossing the y-axis. And the other one's at 4, 0, which is crossing the x-axis, like point A did. So it says, which of these points can determine the zeros of the equation? Um, the zeros of the equation is where it crosses the x-axis, so that is a and c, so that is choice three. Moving on. Question 10. Given the parent function, f of x equals x cubed, the function g of x equals x minus one cubed minus two, is a result of a shift of f of x. So they want to know what happened if I added the minus 1 and then cubed it and then on the end put a minus 2. So you can go to your calculator with that one. And when we do, we're going to plug it in. So we're going to go ahead and plug in that first x cubed. So x, the arrow is to the third. And the other one is parenthesis, type it in exactly as they have it, x minus 1 to the third minus two. And when we hit graph, we want to make sure we know what the first one is. So the first one is going to graph is your y1, then it's going to graph your y2. So we need to make sure and pay attention. We know which one is the original. So here's the original one coming up right there. And then the second one is below it. Looks like it went below two and also moved to the right. So I'm looking for something that went down two I'm sorry. Yes, it went down two, and then it looks like it went to the right one spot. So to the right one, down two is choice three. Number 11, if C equals 2A squared minus five, and D equals three minus A, then C minus two D equals. All right. so. A lot of letters there. A lot of students get um, upset because they're, it's hard to kind of comprehend what's going on here. But they tell you what C is. 
All right, C equals all this junk right here, the 2a squared minus 5. And D equals this junk, 3 minus a. So now they want to know what C minus 2D equals. So for C, I'm going to put in that junk there. And for D, I'm going to replace it with this junk here. So 2a squared minus 5. So we're going to put that in for C. 2a squared minus 5. That's my C. Now I have a minus sign in the middle. So minus a 2. And now my D is 3 minus A. And that needs to be put in as a quantity. Okay. And now we need to combine like terms. So in order to do that, we first have to distribute this minus 2. So when I do that, I'm going to get 2A squared minus 5. It's rewriting that. And then a negative 2 minus 3 is a minus 6. A negative 2 times a minus A is a positive 2A. We're going to have to write that in standard form. So I know I can combine my two middle here. So 2A squared. Then I want the 2A. And then this is the plain number, and this would be a minus 11. So that is choice 3. All right. Remember, standard form, the exponents, or the powers, go from highest to lowest. So we have an A squared. And then the plain A, which means there's an invisible number 1. That means to the first power. And then no A. Okay, last one for this part, this video, it's number 12. We got Mark bought a new laptop for $1,250. He kept track of the value of the laptop over the next three years as shown in the table below. Which function can be used to determine the value for the laptop for X years after the purchase? So this is my initial cost. And then after one year, it goes down to 1,000. After two years, it goes down to 800. After three years, the value is now at $640. So that tells me that is a decay problem. So the decay, remember, is the initial value times 1 minus the percent to the time. All right, so the initial value is what he bought it for, $1,250. So that eliminates choices one and two right off the bat because they have the initial value at 1,000, but that's after one year. So we were left with three and four. If it's decaying, it's going down. We have a one minus some kind of percent. So one minus anything is gonna give us a number in parentheses that's less than one. The only one that's less than one is choice four as 0.8 is less than 1, where 1.2 is greater than 1. So it's choice 4. So that is questions 1 through 12. Our next video, we're going to do questions uh, 13 through 24. If you have any questions on these 12 questions, just go ahead and let me know in class, and I'll see you then.